This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com. Today, I'm gonna to take you through how I do my polar alignment. Last night I had a pretty rough time guiding. Uh, I noticed that there were uh, quite a few times where it was struggling and I think it's because my polar alignment's off. It's been a while since I last polar aligned. I want to say it was about the beginning of September and now it's the middle of November. It's really nice when you have um, your setup on a solid pier but you still have to get back to basics every once in a while. So. Hopefully I'll have a chance to show you guys how I do my polar alignment. I've got the QHY uh, the pole master hooked to this, so I'll show you how that works. And uh, we'll go from there. Here's a shot of the moon with the clouds, with the sun going down from inside the observatory. It's a beautiful night, unseasonably warm, just gorgeous out. Okay, well the sun's down. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I just wanna warn everyone that it's a little windy and there might be some microphone noise. So, let's connect to the camera. First thing we're gonna do is um, set the parameters to make this more visible. So here's Polaris here. I don't think, I think we're going to touch this up just a little bit so we can see just add a little bit more to the gain because <clears throat> you need to see the stars around Polaris so we'll click finish here and then we'll double click Polaris and then we have to move the rotator until the stars are in the circles look it's a satellite there. Okay, so you can see all the stars are inside the circles. And we've got Polaris double clicked, so we'll hit accept. We're not going to use the same axis position because I want to go through the whole thing again to make sure that we get a, a really good alignment. So now we'll choose a star other than Polaris and we'll just pick this one here. And then we have to move the telescope 30 degrees. So we'll open up our toolbox and ASCOM connect. And we'll unpark the telescope. And we'll move Oh, we're gonna have to change the rate of speed. And move our telescope thirty degrees. Okay. I hope the wind's not too bad on the audio. So, oh, this touchpad sensitive. Okay, close enough. And now we'll move it 30 more degrees. To me, this still beats looking inside of the viewfinder. 
Okay, that's a lot more than 30 degrees. We moved more than 90 over uh, the course of both moves. So we'll have to click finish. And then we'll double click the star one more time. And now we've got our circle. Just move this up so you can see it. And now it wants us to return the RA axis to the home position. So what I'm going to do is just click park the home position here. And what we're doing is we're making sure that the star that we chose, which is right here, is staying along the axis as it rotates. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so we've ensured that the star stayed on there, and we're going to hit correct. And then we're going to double click Polaris one more time. We're going to make sure that these are still in. We could minimize this. We're going to make sure the stars are still within the circles. I think we might be able to move that one click. And say success. Move Polaris into the circle. See, we were off, I was off quite a bit. I could tell I was from the last time the guiding scope was having a really hard time staying on center. So what I do is I put my mouse over this reticle and I open up my laptop screen as much as I can. And then it looks like I just have to go on one axis. So you loosen one side, one bolt, while well, you tighten the other one. And I honestly can't remember if this is gonna go up or down, but we'll find out in a second. And if not, we'll just return it back, so yeah. Now you could see oh, I went a little too far, so I gotta come back the other direction. And you just have to play with these knobs a little bit. And what I found, especially with the EQ6R, is that the, the bolts, you could turn it a little bit at a time, and then all of a sudden, the star Polaris moves quite a bit with just a tiny little turn. So you really need to give it just little 1 16th turns or less over and over again. It gets a little tedious. Oh, see, there we go. And then let me tighten this back up a little bit more. Now I'll move the other knobs, just the hair, to see which direction it's going to go. That's the wrong way. So we need to loosen the rear. Wow, I got that in there tight. And it really just needs to be within the circle, but I like to get it right on the crosshairs because I won't do this again for another couple months. And the closer you get it, the better. It's pretty touchy. I'm almost there. Okay, there we go. That is as close as I'm going to get it. And I'll click finish. And now I'll double click Polaris again. Make sure that the stars are within the circles. Click success. And now let's start our monitor. Now this is the precise alignment. We, what we just did was a rough alignment. Now we're going to do the precise alignment. And it wants us to put uh, the green box and, and the red cross on top of each other. So again, I move my mouse over the top so that it's um, as big as I could see it. I open my laptop screen as wide as I can. And it looks like both adjustments need just a hair. Okay. Well, this is about as close as I'm going to get it right here. Uh, but it's pretty precise, actually. And it'll last me again for 
probably another two months, maybe in uh, January I'll come out and do this again. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please leave a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.